what's going on guys welcome back to another video and today we're going to be installing my spacers that i ordered um, I'm, this hopefully this is going to be the right amount of spacing that i need i'm trying to get my fitment perfect to my taste um everybody has their own preference on fitment but while i open these up i want to tell you guys a little story of what happened over the last couple days so i took my car over to uh lineman shop, car shop, mechanic shop. Um, I'm not going to mention the name, but I needed to get an alignment as you guys saw in the previous video. I ended up um, cambering my car a negative, a negative degree or negative one and a half extra. And um, so I wanted to get an alignment because to my understanding, uh, even though I got a discount whenever I went to go get my first alignment, I was told that I qualified for two alignments within the year so you know I was like you know what the heck let's just go ahead and I uh, take to the not it wasn't the same shop there was the same chain so I went over to the uh, the shop and they were like yeah we can do it you know we have certain people that work on lower vehicles like we won't have a problem the only thing is we can't get you in for another three to four hours so like, okay um, I guess I'll leave the car and you know, that was probably my mistake with leaving the car. And um, yeah, so within, and this is this is what kind of gets me upset is that within an hour, hour and a half, they called me saying that they tried to do the alignment, but because my car was too low, it wasn't going over their safety bars that they have at the end of the alignment rack. So this is the, the rack and this is the bars. My bumper was kind of, coming close to the uh, the bar it wasn't going over it and there was no way around it unless it took the bumper off so supposedly they put the car back down and that was it um, you know I go I get there to pick up my car and as soon as I'm walking out towards the car I'm able to spot it um, there was a nick on the bottom end of the bumper where the splitter would go and then you know like just from a distance I knew I drove the car the night before but if I would have hit something, I would have hurt it. There would have been paint scraped in like more than one, just like a dime piece size um, chip. And then on the other side, there was a scrape mark too, just a tiny one. And um, so I go up to the, the go back inside the store, and you know, I ask to speak to the manager. One guy comes out, and uh, he takes a look at it. He takes a couple pictures, and, he, and then he goes. Well, I don't think it could be us because there's no red paint. And I'm like, okay. Like, well, and then I was like, but the car wasn't like this when I brought it. Otherwise, if I would have hit something, I would have known. And I mean, I'm not the type of person to make something up to try to get some money out of it. Um, so he said, he was like, I'm, I'm going to let you speak to my store manager whenever he gets back. So within 10 minutes later, the guy gets back and he comes out to take a look at the car. He's he starts denying, saying that his tech is experienced, he's been there for years, um, that they have ramps that help the car go on the lift. And, you know, we got to the point, he was like, you know, there's no red paint. He said the same thing, there's no red paint on the car. So I really don't see how it could be us. And then he's, he, he suggested that, or he offered to show me how to get the car back, how they got the car on the rack. I'm like, all right, that's fine. And, you know, at first I was thinking that maybe they pushed the car forward too much and they happened to hit the, uh, the safety bars at the end of the rack. So, the guy sets up the, uh, the ramps and everything and the car goes on there perfectly fine. So I'm like, huh, okay. And then I'm looking around and I don't see anything, like nothing comes to mind on what it could hit. Uh, the bumper isn't lining up, the damage wasn't lining up where the metal safety bars are. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe I did hit something. Like, and, but it's kind of weird for it to be on both sides. And you know, at that moment, I kind of forgot about the driver's side because it was underneath the bumper. And then on the driver's side, I mean the passenger side, that's where most of the damage was. So there's a, an indention, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Uh, there's an indention and some of the paint came off. So in conclusion, I walked away thinking, wondering, asking myself, what did I hit? Because, you know, 
I would have heard something. And I'm like, well, damn, now I'm going to have to pay out of pocket to get this fixed because even me putting a lip on it is not going to cover it. Um, so I get home, you know, I start doing some other things that I had to do. And when it came to, I was going to go outside to wash the car. Um, and I happened to, really, it was, it happened to be like five minutes after the closing time. I decided to look underneath the car and sure enough, there's a little bit of red paint, which I'll put a picture on here that I took at the shop, but I didn't take a look at it while I was over there. Um, so I'll put a picture on here for you guys to see. There's a faint red mark on the bumper, which their alignment racks are red. So I was like, you know what? They probably try to get the car on the lift without the, ramp, without the ramps at first. And then they realized that the car wasn't gonna go on there with, you know, without using the ramps. And, you know, maybe the tech or maybe the manager tried to wipe the paint off and try to deny it. I'm not exactly sure how everything works, but I'm assuming the less accidents your shop reports, maybe the better bonus that you get at the end of the year. But, you know, that's none of my issue. They should have kind of, you know, stand behind something like that if that was their fault. But if they're gonna sit there and try to deny it, that's what gets me mad. Um, why is there red paint underneath my bumper? Like, I haven't hit anything. The bumper was freshly painted maybe like two months ago. There's no rock chips, nothing. So, where would that, you know, those chip marks come from? So anyways, I showed the guy, I went back the next day, first thing in the morning when they opened, and I showed the guy the, the marks, and he wasn't able to say anything, you know? He, um, he ended up offering to fix it. He, he still tried to deny that he didn't, you know, he didn't do anything or his tech probably didn't do anything, but they were going to take care of it. Why all of a sudden when I show you some red paint on the bumper and even, and even offer to show you the timestamp on a picture of when I took the picture, just so he doesn't think that I'm making it up and then I added some paint to the bumper. So I have proof of when I took the picture and where. So more than likely that's where the paint came from. I didn't leave the shop when I took uh, when I took the picture, so where else would red paint you know transfer over to my bumper? So long I mean I know it's already a long story, so now I have to go through the process of getting my bumper fixed before I can put on my lip which I've been waiting two weeks now to put on. Uh, the first time the, the lip came damaged, and then I had to wait another week for the lip to arrive. And now I have to wait about another week, maybe a week and a half before I can get the lip on. So this is, I mean, it's, it wasn't a great weekend, but on top of that, I wasn't able to make it to the Keys uh, Motorsport Show. But anyways, I ended up going with the red spacers off of Sonic Tuning. I ended up getting 12 and a half. Uh, I know I had mentioned wanting 15 millimeters, but I wanted I went ahead and played it safe because I might end up a great going up a size and tire. So right now I'm running 235, uh, 35, and I'm gonna be going up to a 245, 35, hopefully next time around. But yeah guys, let me go ahead and uh, show you guys how the spacers actually, actually look like.